So we are in New York City with Monty Joffe, who is the co-director of The Will to Achieve and previously co-founder and founding principal of the Renaissance Charter School in uh, New York City. That's right. Thank you so much for I'm this happy interview. happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so today uh, with the Monte Joffe, we will discuss global citizenship and global citizenship education. And obviously we will also get into details about your uh, project, The Will to Achieve, which is quite interesting and obviously educational-based. Uh, but the first question is a straightforward question. Uh, what do you think about global citizenship and what do you think about global citizenship education and how would you define these notions? Um, yes, uh, for, for me the foundational, uh, my foundational thinking about education for global citizenship uh, comes from Daisaku Ikeda's speech in 1996 mm. at Teachers College which he called Thoughts mm. for Education for global citizenship, thoughts on education for global citizenship. Yes. And uh, he presented, I think, a very different notion of um, global citizenship education than is uh, currently um, thought about. Um, and from his standpoint, everything begins with the, uh, with not the local, the local area, the community, and also everything begins with the student teacher relationship. Mm. So he's very explicit right. that global citizenship education is not, global citizenship rather, is not the number of languages or the number of countries yes. Uh, yes. one has traveled, but rather it's mm. in the heart. And this led me to think very deeply about right. global citizenship in context rather than in theory. Yes. yes. So at Renaissance, I believe we were very successful in creating a humanistic environment right. where kids feel globally because they yes. feel respected and honored yes. and teachers feel respected and honored. Mm -hmm. So I think global citizenship um, actually speaks from the walls of a school yes. rather, rather than um, in, in some type of curriculum manual. Right, right, it's right. breathed, it's demonstrated, it's exhibited. Mm -hmm. So you're saying it's this uh, 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 deep relationship between the teacher and the students that uh, then creates the context for global citizenship. Is this, yes, uh, and also the relationship between teachers and teachers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the relationship between administration and teachers and students and sure. parents, sure. all of the stakeholders, do they feel honored? Yes. Do they feel like they've been embraced by global citizenship? Yeah. And uh, you mentioned uh, Daisaku Ikeda, and you also mentioned uh, the Renaissance Charter School in New York City. Can you, for our viewer, viewers, uh, just uh, briefly uh, explain uh, who is Daisaku Ikeda and the project of the Renaissance Charter School in New York City. Yes, well, Daisaku Ikeda is the uh, president of the Soka Gakkai International, mm -hmm. and uh, and he's uh, for many years he said that education is his final undertaking. Now mm -hmm. he just mm -hmm. turned ninety years old. Yes. So what does that mean? Um, in uh, the United States. Uh, in uh, February 17th, uh, 1990, he formed what's called the Culture Department. Yes. Uh, which is in the coalition of SGI members who work in the mm. fields mm. of education, academia, yes. medicine, and law. <coughs> so this began my thought process of what is actually a global citizenship education. Mm -hmm. And um, I helped to form a uh, mm -hmm. committee, mm -hmm. and the committee went on to uh, write a proposal to start a school yes. within the New York City Board of Education. The committee members were quite eclectic in their educational philosophy. Yes. yes. Uh, there was no defining um, curricular or um, philosophical Foundation. Thread, but what what we um, what really resonated mm -hmm. with us uh, was a quote from Mr. Ikeda that uh, a great human revolution mm -hmm. in the character mm -hmm. of a single individual 
can transform uh, the community and mm. even the world. Yes, yes. So we began to think, what does that mean in terms mm. of education? Right, right. And by the way, that statement is actually written on the walls of our school uh, to this very day. Mm -hmm. um, at any rate, what does that mean? So um, the first part of founding our school yes. is coming up with uh, our mission statement, yeah. which is developing leaders for the renaissance of New York. Mm. Very so we believe that um, our students will become the leaders who could transform the economy, the politics, uh, the family structure, right. uh, all aspects of New York City. Mm -hmm. How many students in total now with the Renaissance Charter? 550. 550. So our thinking then went to the point of, well, Therefore, the name of the school should be Renaissance. Mm -hmm. And then how do you create leaders? And uh, in New York City, most mm -hmm. of America, every yes. three, four years, students are, uh, go to a new school yes. where they no longer mm -hmm. feel rooted right. in their community. They're right. strangers. Right. And is that the best way to create leaders? Yes. So we decided to come up with a school that ran all the way from kindergarten through 12th grade under one roof mm -hmm. with the notion that continuity and rootedness um, would breed trust mm -hmm. and um, and uh, the experiment has gone very very well the school is now in its 23rd year congratulations yes that's, uh, that's a great result all right so uh, you've been dealing with a lot of students and you've been teaching for a long time uh, so this brings us to the second question, and then obviously after this question we will discuss the will to achieve, which is your current project, the project you're working on at the moment. But um, um, what is a global citizen, in your opinion, in three key words? Uh, yes, uh, a happy, contributive citizen. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, th this entails a few different dimensions. Uh, yes. Number one, that there has to be a culture of self-improvement, mm, mm. of self-challenge, mm. but it can't stop at the individual. Yes. It has to uh, extend to the community. Community. Mm -hmm. And then in reality, this is um, very, very important that its teacher has to move and change first. Mm -hmm. If the teacher doesn't go through this profound transformation, how could we ask students to go through a profound mm. transformation? Interesting. So you're saying that uh, the, the teacher first should undertake a process of inner, inner transformation, or as you said before, sort of a human revolution, and then is uh, based on that, then he or she can transfer that life experience in, uh, onto the students. Right. Interesting. And in um, Mr. Ikeda's speech, uh, he talked about uh, teachers, uh, here's, he's uh, paraphrasing from uh, his mentor's mentor, mm -hmm. Tsunesaburo Makaguchi, mm -hmm. but he's talking about uh, teachers needing to come down from their lofty perch and sure. look at the child right in front of them. So at Renaissance, we mm -hmm. tried to uh, put this into the environment. So everyone at our school is on a first name basis. Right. From the smallest child yeah. to the uh, principal of the school. Mm -hmm. this, this provides a deep level of I'm a person and you're a person. Right, right. Interesting. Very um, interesting. All right. And then you mentioned Tsunezapuro Makikuchi, who is a Japanese educator and is considered uh, um, the initiator of, of what is called so-called value-creating education. Uh, but how, in your opinion, you've been studying Makiguchi for a long time um, in depth, uh, how uh, in, in Makiguchi's pedagogical approach and, and philosophy would connect to the current notion of global citizenship education. Yes, and we have to remember that Makaguchi, along with uh, John Dewey, mm. uh, and this is a topic in Mr. Ikeda's speech, yes. but at the same time, there were many educators uh, appearing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, on the scene from all right. around the country, <laughs> Tagore in India, uh, uh, Rudolf Steiner in, in Germany, Kurt Hahn in uh, England, uh, 
uh, Maria Montessori in Italy, Jesus. all born within um, Rudolf, I mentioned Rudolf Steiner, yes, yeah. uh, all born uh, within a few years of each other. Yes. All of them were responding to the shift in society that mm -hmm. moved from an agrarian to an industrial right. age. And yes. all of the uh, se uh, seismic uh, transformations. Yes. But now we're moving from an industrial society to the post-industrial technological society. Right, right. And in many ways, um, we need this same type of fresh creative thinking mm. that was exhibited by these um, early 20th century figures. Right. Because nothing right. is the same anymore. That's right. Nothing That's is right. the same. Mm -hmm. So global citizenship mm -hmm. has to be removed from its wrappers. It can't be seen as a product. Right. It has to be seen as a process. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is establish a new paradigm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so global citizenship exists within the moment, within the child, within the school, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a task of, of uh, educators promoting global citizenship education mm -hmm. to figure out how to liberate the moment right. in order to liberate the structure of GCE. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, this brings us to your current uh, uh, educational projects, The Will to Achieve. So let me ask you uh, a couple of questions. Um, first of all, why uh, such a, an important uh, name, The Will to Achieve, has a strong uh, impact? And when I first heard about your project, I was really interested and I look into the project. It's, it's definitely uh, something that will create value. So, uh, why the name uh, The Will to Achieve and what is the purpose of uh, this project? Yes, in terms of transforming American K-12 through education, yes. uh, in the past uh, 50 or 60 years there have been innumerable mm -hmm. attempts to transform the curriculum, yes. teacher training, mm -hmm. accountability, uh, the role of um, uh, uniformity, mm -hmm. standards, mm -hmm. assessment, numeral, nu num uh, numerous intents, right. but nothing has produced significant change mm -hmm. that we have hoped for. Right. Recently it's right. become very, very clear that there's an achievement gap mm -hmm. between um, with rich and poor students in right. school districts, right. as well as an ethnic um, divide. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and uh, the current way of thinking is based on an accountability movement, mm -hmm. which in turn is based on um, an exceptionalism. Right. In other words, uh, we have the uh, movie that came out a few years back, Waiting for Superman. Right. In other words, the focus has been on the few exceptional educators who can uh, transform a school or a classroom, right. whatever. Right. However, that's the failure of public policy mm, 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 mm. that only um, the exceptional person can make the change. If you look at right. Weber's thinking, um, mm. Weber was concerned what type of structure mm. could make it possible for anyone who was sincere and hardworking to succeed. Right. right. So um, we believe in the will to achieve that the solution has to be a surge mm. of human resources mm, mm, mm. that come from all directions and all spaces uh, exerting powerful force on the individual child yes. so that the individual child can break any barrier and cra uh, crack the code. Right, right. So um, the co-director in this initiative, T. Willard Fair, mm -hmm. who's the executive um, CEO of the Urban League of Greater Miami, mm -hmm. actually has been speaking for many years about the will to achieve. Right. In other words, if we're able to activate the will to achieve in a student, yes, everything becomes possible. Mm -hmm. There is no limitation anymore. Yes. Yes. Every child can succeed even though we know that we're going to be dealing with funding irregularities and, and uh, latent racism, even though we know these things are uh, going to be with us for quite a few years or maybe decades, yes. but once the will to achieve is activated, 
then nothing could stop that individual child. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Um, and uh, so uh, it will be interesting to understand um, in the future what are your plans with this project and also how this project would be connected to, to foster global citizens or so students who eventually creates value in society, as, as you just said. Yes, so um, the key point is how mm. we can initiate mm. global citizenship mm. within individual settings. Right, right. Now, right now the curriculum is so crowded, mm. uh, teachers are so um, overstressed. Yes, yes. That is not the type of environment that can create a wave of global citizenship education. Right, right. The ethos cannot emerge mm -hmm. in that type of combative, mm -hmm. um, non-humanistic context. context. Yes, yes. So in order to provide this context, mm -hmm. we need to economize the um, educational curriculum. Yes. So it is very, very easy to accomplish rather than hard. Yes. Good educational policy has to make it easy for people to work hard. Right, right. right. So our goal is to create um, a series of four initiatives across the country mm. that will empower parents, community members, yes. community leaders, entrepreneurs to become the, the surge of human resources that can help students. Right. So this right. requires four initiatives. The first one are standards that parents can understand and embrace. Yes. And uh, right now, many parents have been marginalized mm. and have been excluded from their own children's education. Right, right. And they've um, held up their hands sure. and they've given the keys to the so-called experts mm. who themselves, there's no clear consensus about what will work. Mm, 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 mm. The second component is... Mm. Um, an accountability system mm. that is open and flexible right. rather than the artificial um, high-stakes testing environment. So right. we foresee um, an assessment system that's mm -hmm. very much like uh, your bar examination mm -hmm. or your uh, Department of Motor Vehicle examination where when a child has met these standards at any time he or she can right. certify that they have met these standards. Right. And right. if they haven't met it, met them at a given time, they can go back, study harder, and then retake the test. Right. So instead of a one time does it all, uh, we're replacing it with um, an initiative of the child. And this will take right. all the mystery and surprise out of the educational uh, equation. Sure. So parents can adopt their, um, mm. will know how to help mm. their children. The yes. third initiative is bringing the power of mobile technology mm. through what we call learning apps. Uh, right. Most of the curriculum can be taught through learning apps, which would then free the teacher to lead excursions, to apply right. knowledge and settings. Uh, this would leave uh, more time for mm -hmm. athletics, which is the playing field that tra trains leaders for tech, for a hands-on type of learning for art endeavors. Interesting. In other words, if we're able to economize, as Makaguchi said, yes, the curriculum into fifty percent of the school day, hmm. the other fifty percent can be directed towards activities that will foster global citizenship. Right. Right. And the final component, the fourth hmm. component, Very interesting, is redesigning the schoolhouse so we find individualized hmm. settings that work for children yes. instead of expecting children to fit into the norms of the educational settings. Right, right, right. right. So these are the four uh, pillars. Yes. Uh, very interesting. This is very interesting. All right, this brings us to the conclusion. Uh, but before we conclude, a uh, final question. Thank you so much, Montejama, in advance for taking time for this precious interview. Um, Based on your long time experience as an educator, based on what you just shared with us, um, what, uh, let's say, two or three key recommendations would you like to share uh, with educators, researchers uh, who are um, 
undertaking efforts to uh, promote global citizenship education or even implement principles of global citizenship within the courses and programs. Um, uh, you, again, you, you had a long experience in education here in New York City, uh, com obviously community-based, really um, uh, uh, facing on a daily basis challenges in teaching your students. What do you feel? What, what kind of couple of recommendations uh, based on your experience? Well, the, the, the first uh, recommendation mm. is that teachers in this most difficult time cannot lose hope. Right. If right. the individual teacher loses hope, mm. how can we expect the emergence of, of global citizenship education? Yes. How could we preach that there is a room and space and time yes. uh, for uh, global citizenship education when teachers despair? Right. We have the teacher needs to understand that this is a most difficult time of mm. cataclysmic mm. change. Yes. And as a result, hope itself yes. is the butterfly effect in a time of chaos. Yes. So the teacher no matter how arduous the circumstances, mm -hmm. must have hope and must believe that the next interaction I have, regardless of the past, mm -hmm. or regardless of what's going around me, the next interaction I have with students or colleagues or parents right. will change the calculus. Right, right. So uh, th this is a hope-based mm -hmm. individual uh, mandate that teachers must embrace the, the second um, recommendation is let's not think of global citizenship education as a so-called add-on, something right. to be added onto the curriculum right. on top of all of the other things that are um, in the busy school day. Right. Rather than an add-on, we read because the add-on will um, could actually be counterproductive mm -hmm. and uh, force educators into hiding or into actually uh, sly types of um, resistance, right. which we want to avoid. Right. Right. In, in other words, we, yeah. we need to have confidence that by having global citizenship right there in our heart and in our classroom, yes. that that's the beginning step. And then from that beginning step, many things will happen. All right, thank you so much to Monte Joffe. Um, it's really a great pleasure to be with you here in New York City. I really appreciate your thank time. Thank you very much. And the precious experiences you that much. you shared with us. Thank you thank so you. much again.